Connie and I would like to thank you all for the love and support that you've given us over the years. And if you will permit me, I'd like to share a few thoughts on the principles and motivations that bring us to this situation today. We are blessed to live in a friendly community, in an inspiringly beautiful state, in a great country, an exceptional country. That exceptionalism has been passed down from generation to generation and is now being passed to the school children who sang so beautifully with us here today. We are exceptional not because of our DNA. It's not our blood. Person by person, we are no more special than those who live in Canada or Italy or India or Kenya or elsewhere. To claim differently would be an affront to Almighty God who creates every individual precious and born to be free. We are exceptional in the history of the world because our country's founders, in many cases at the cost of their families and lives, by the pledge of their sacred honor, brought to life a peculiar for the time, an inversion in the relationship between government and those governed. In a rejection of the pattern and norm of history, America codified for the first time the supremacy of the individual over government. People above government, free from the hubris of a monarch, free from the demands of oligarchs, free from the threats of tyrants, free from the brutality of dictators. People free to choose to form a society and create a government of specific and limited powers. This gift, we standing here and still today, the hope of people across the globe who yearn to breathe free is the Constitution of the United States of America. The document that when honored and applied has over these many years freed those Americans who came before us to create the traditions, successes, and remarkable achievements that we would call American exceptionalism. It is rooted in a simple truth. The power of governance is by God vested in the people and from them must be cautiously and sparingly delegated to government. It is in that free space created by the Constitution that creativity, brilliance, and generosity of the individuals is unleashed, and the envy of history did appear. It is that time and place that we have known and call modern America. In what some would argue be the great American novel, East of Eden, John Steinbeck wrote, it is true, two men can lift a bigger stone than one man. The group can build automobiles quicker and better than one man. And bread from a huge factory is cheaper and more uniform. When our food and clothing and housing are all born in the complication of mass production, mass method is bound to get into our thinking and eliminate all other thinking. In our time, mass or collective production has entered our economics, our politics, and even our religion so that some nations have substituted the idea of the collective for the idea of God. At such a time, it seems natural and good to me to ask myself these questions. What do I believe in? What must I fight for and what must I fight against? Our species, says Steinbeck, is the only creative species and it has only one creative instrument, the individual mind and spirit of a man. Nothing was ever created by two men. There are no good collaborations, whether in music and art and poetry and mathematics, or in philosophy. Once the miracle of creation has taken place, the group can build and extend it, but the group never invents anything. The preciousness lies in the lonely mind of a man. John Steinbeck. We have straddled for some time now a divide between a belief in God as the provider and a belief in government as the provider. Increasingly, Americans have accepted the idea that government can be omniscient or all-knowing, omnipresent or everywhere, and the source of all good. Not only is this blasphemous, seeking to replace God with government, but it's false on its face. Government is not capable of that high calling. It must be left to God 
and to free people. The vibrancy of the America we sometimes pine for and desire to rejuvenate lies first in understanding the value of the individual and immediately thereafter freeing the individual to think and dream and plan and then pull together the team to make that plan a reality. It is my clear conviction that a smaller government at every level is the catalyst necessary to spark a rebirth in Colorado that will lead to revitalization of America. As Steinbeck wrote, we must determine what we will fight for and what we will fight against. Here is my answer. After two years as a member and two additional years as chairman of the State Board of Education, I will in January of 2015, if all goes as we're working to make it happen, I will take the struggle for the freedom of parents to exercise their right and responsibility to direct the education and upbringing of their children and more broadly, but equally forcefully, the urgent and relentless struggle for liberty and the prosperity that flow forth when government is constrained. I will take it across the street from the state boardroom to the state capitol. It is our desire to serve you as the representative of House District 19. Now, this is a unique seat, and with it comes a unique burden. The seat should not only be a Republican seat, it should be a leadership seat, as it has in the past. It is my intention to be more than a conservative vote from this House District. It is my commitment to you, I will be a leader focused on conservative and constitutional principles who reaches out beyond this district and puts a shoulder to the wheel of returning the Colorado House of Representatives to conservative authority. Right. You've heard our tagline, or will shortly, smaller government, bigger people. We believe it captures the themes that have called us, Connie and I, deeper into public service. Now, let me turn Steinbeck's question back on you. What will you fight for? What will you fight against? You hear the calling as well. I would ask that you join me today and tomorrow and tomorrow's tomorrows to help carry the banner of smaller government and bigger people. God bless you, Colorado, and the United States of America. Thank you very much.